In this video, we're going to look at problem 2.1.2. We're going to be finding a level of payments over a certain period that a person can pay to get what's called a perpetuity. A perpetuity is a, an annuity where your payments go on forever. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, yeah, they're pretty rare in real life, but we can still consider the idea. So here's the problem. Bob wants to purchase a perpetuity, an annuity that goes on forever, that pays him 1000 per year with the first payment due at the end of year 11. So starting uh, 11 years from today, he's going to get 1000 every year forever. Well, of course, Bob will not live forever, but you know maybe he can pass it on to his descendants. He can purchase it either by one of two ways. Either by paying 900 per year at the end of each year for 10 years, or by paying K per year at the end of each year for the first five years and nothing for the next five years. Calculate K. All right, let's draw a number line. So here we are, times zero. I think I better write all these numbers here. Let's head up toward time 10, that's the end of 10 years, then time 11, 12, 13. It's starting at time 11 that he gets paid a thousand per year. That's the end of the 11th year. So he's getting paid a thousand now per year forever. How can such a the present value of such a thing be finite? Well, it's related to the fact that sums of infinite series can be finite as well especially infinite geometric series is a common kind of example that comes up here. Again, there are two ways to pay for it. Option one, pay 900 per year at the end of each year for the first 10 years. 900 here, 900 here, etc. Up to a 900 here at time 10. And option two, pay K per year at the end of each year for the first five years, K, 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 and nothing thereafter. Solve for K. The idea here is, and that's hopefully going to enable us to solve for K, is that the values of these three different income streams should be equivalent. They should be the same at any moment in time. I could pull all these back to time zero or some other time, and in fact, I think it turns out to be easiest to evaluate the values of these different income streams at time 10. Let's focus first on the things that we know. Uh, let's look at option one first. We can think of that as an annuity immediate, and we are finding the future value immediately after the last payment at time 10. For option one, the value at time 10 is going to be 900 S10. We don't know the interest rate. Maybe, yeah, evidently, that's not going to be necessary to know. Or maybe we can solve for it. That's the value for option one at time 10. What about the value for option two at time 10? Well, if we first find its value at time five, we can think of it as an annuity uh, immediate. And we are finding the future value at time five to be K times S5. But I want to move that forward to time 10. I need to multiply it times the growth factor 1 plus i to the fifth. So at time 10, the value is going to be k s5 times 1 plus i to the fifth. What about the perpetuity? I want to find really the present value of all those quantities at time 10. Um, evidently, in terms of the discount factor V, it's going to be a thousand V, because that thousand is going to get pulled back in time one year, plus a thousand V squared. This one thousand is going to get pulled back in time two years, plus a thousand V cubed. This one thousand gets pulled back in time three years, etc. This is an infinite series. And it's an infinite geometric series, in fact, that will converge to the first term. 1000 V divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is going to be V, as long as that common ratio has absolute value less than 1. V 
for us in these situations always is between 0 and 1, so there's no problem. This converges to that. This can also be thought of as the limiting value of a n as n goes to infinity. Um, well, in this case, a thousand a n. As n goes to infinity, uh, v to the n, because v is between 0 and 1, will go to 0. This approaches 1000 over i as n goes to infinity. Evidently, this equals 1000 over i. Is that really true? You might want to double check that. v over 1 minus v should equal 1 over i. Replace v with 1 over 1 plus i. And simplify. Multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus i. You'll get 1 over 1 plus i minus 1. You will get 1 over i. So in fact, this quantity and this quantity are the same thing. I think we'll actually use this quantity. That'll be a little easier to use uh, in relating it to the other two things here. All these things are equal to each other. So we get a series of equations. We get that 900 S10 equals K S5 times 1 plus I to the fifth equals 1000 over I. And we need to try to solve this for k. Get the formula for s10 and s5. We, this is going to become 900 times 1 plus i to the 10th minus 1 over i equals k times 1 plus i to the 5th minus 1 over i times one, another 1 plus i to the 5th equals 1,000 over i. This can be simplified a bit by multiplying everything by i. And expanding out maybe here, we'll get 900 1 plus i to the 10th minus 900 equals, cool sign here, k times multiply the 1 plus i to the 5th through. Um, actually, I think I'll keep, keep the k out because we got to solve for k. And this equals 1,000. Um, the equality between this and this can allow us to solve for 1 plus i to the 10th. Uh, let's see, if we add 900 to both sides and then divide by 900, we'll get 1 plus i to the 10th is 1900 over 900 or 19 ninths, which means also that 1 plus i to the 5th, since, since we'll need that here, will be the square root of that. That'll be square root of 19 over square root of 9, which is square root of 19 over 3. Uh, I've got to solve for k. I can plug this into here and plug this into here. Simplify, set it equal to 1,000, divide to solve for k. Looks like k is going to be 1,000 divided by 19 ninths minus square root of 19 over 3. Uh, you can multiply the top and the bottom by 9. If you do so, you'll get 9,000 over 19 minus 3 root 19. Okay, you, I could have gotten approximations to these things earlier, but let's go ahead. This should be the answer. Let me find the square root of 19 first. There's the square root of 19. Multiply it by 3 times 3. Subtract that from 19. So I'll go negative plus 19. Take 9,000 divided by that. So I'll take the reciprocal of this and multiply times 9,000. There we go. Looks like k is about 1519.42. And I'm double checking, yes, that is the correct answer. So that was quite a, a long and involved problem, uh, as well as the last video where we, it's a problem early in chapter two, and it's not an S problem, but it's definitely a good problem to practice learning your skills. And we also introduce, introduce the idea of a perpetuity in this video. And yes, you could see that the present value was finite.